This is a day I have looked forward to for over three and a half months. I'm gonna finally show you the new studio. But before we go in, I do wanna say something. This is the result of years worth of accumulating equipment and accumulating gear, putting together things based on what I've learned. I first started this process when I was 15 years old in high school with my darkroom. Let's now go inside the new studio. Hi everyone and welcome to Pal to Tech. This is the studio tour that I have been promising you for a while now. Let's start with Studio B, okay? We're gonna go in in Studio A in just a second, but I wanna show you the product table. This is where I film all of my product shots, all the B-roll, all the testing, everything else is shot right here at this table. A couple of things about this. First off, I'm using a standing desk and I didn't think it would be so handy, but watch this, I can move it right up and right down and that really makes a difference because if say I've got you know everything set up on a tripod I've got all the gear locked in place that I just need this up a little bit higher you know these go to 11 it needs to be just a little bit higher just one higher okay then I press this button boom and that's one higher <laughs> <laughs> I love that feature. The other thing I love about this is I have this monitor right here that plugs into the Atomos Ninja 5 recorder, which plugs into the overhead or the camera that I have right here. And what's great about that is my eyes. It makes the images nice and large and I can make sure I check my focus. Right here I have an older iPad that I use to take notes and I use Apple Notes and I record into it. So for example, let's say I'm testing out this new Instax 12. Oh, wait, there's a problem here. I can't get the da da da. Or if there's something I want to mention about it in the video, I'll hit record and I'll just start talking while I've got the product and I'm in the moment. So have a way to be able to capture your thoughts quickly. Now, sometimes I need to have absolute control and perfectly even lighting all around the products that I'm shooting. And for that, I turn to this. This is the Fin Homie product box and I simply turn it on. I put Gear Iguana right inside there and look Look at how Gear Guan is lit. It's that is too bright, let's turn it down. <laughs> so over here on this side of the studio, I basically have tripods, I've got a little cart right here to move stuff around, and I've got a camera slider. You see that right there? That really helps for some of the shots where I'll say something like, this is the new Fujifilm X-T5, and the, it's zooming in. That's what that's used for. There are two more things I wanna point out in this room. The first, this is not a professional studio, okay? Not by any means at all. This was and is a living room. What wound up happening is kind of like what happens on an airplane, right? When some big guy comes and sits down on that middle seat in coach and starts, you know, taking up the two armrests and spreading his legs open, right? You know what I'm talking about? The photography and the videography and the YouTube channel stuff, it's doing that to the house in the living room and that's the result. So these couches keep getting moved back. So now this former coffee table is now another product demo and testing table. And here's a good tip. These little carts are about 30 bucks or so, and they are so handy because I have everything that I need to work with this product, all of the accessories, everything on this cart, and I could move it around, and it's so handy to be able to do that and to have everything in one place. Here's another little secret. You see that right there? I call this a holding bin, and this is a really great productivity tip. If you happen to be working on photographing or filming a product, there's always these little extra things with that product. So in the case, for example, of the Instax 12, right? What came with it? It had a box, okay? It had instructions, it had this little strap, and so you just quickly throw everything that's pertaining to the thing you're working on, right? And this can just sit right there and it's just organized. You're not having to, if you're doing something quickly, you're like, oh, I gotta look that up in the instructions, boom, you go right in and you can take this and I can take it into the Studio A and everything's together. So these little bins are so handy and you can label them anything you want that you're working on. 
For example, I'm gonna unbox and review this gimbal, and you can bet there's gonna be all kinds of connectors and cords and cables and instructions and things like that that's gonna go in the holding bin and it will travel with me as I go through the process of filming a video about this gimbal. So now we are in what's called the vertical video shooting station of Studio B. You just saw the main area of Studio B. This is sort of behind it. And right here I have everything set up so if I need to, I can quickly shoot a vertical video. To be clear, I hate vertical video, but it's necessary to do for both my channel and promotion. So just wanted to get that out of the way. I grab the phone. Dink, which is what I use a lot in vertical video, and I plug it into a mic, right? Which is this mic right here. Camera goes right on here, boom. This is the TD Artisan, blah, 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 blah. And I can do that, and I have this kind of nice little background. To be honest, I don't just use it for vertical video. It's geared toward mobile videography. So a lot of the tools and the various things, for example, I can take this out of here, and then I come over here, and I can drop it into here so that it holds the phone up exactly evenly using this clamp. Always nice to have a knife standing by for any unboxing station. This is a very necessary component. Okay, have a look at this right here. This is the cinematography cart. I made a whole video about this cinematography cart and I will leave a link to that video in the description below. I keep things in here that make my life easier. Let me show you a little secret. What is this toothbrush doing in here, you may ask? Let me tell you, it's a secret. I use a toothbrush for kind of cleaning off the little dust doohickeys that sometimes, you know, affix themselves on the grips of a lens, on the focus rings of a lens. I could just do this, boom, and the lens looks beautiful when I photograph it. And right here, I have these lenses from Moment. What you do is you put your case on your smartphone, the lens goes right here and you can get some really beautiful lens effects and things like that. Right here is a charging station. So I use USB-C. I think I've got four of these things. So have your charging gear kind of near where you store your lights or things that you need to charge. So for example, in this drawer, I have all of my portable lights. I can take one out or charge it when it's done being charged. And what's great about these magnetic things, and by the way, I will leave a link to all of the stuff that I'm I'm talking about in the description down below if you want to check it out. This is another one of those bins I was talking about where I keep all of the little things connected to a specific product that I'm working on. Right now, it's the Weeble 3. So all the little, you know, there's the instructions, there's all the parts for it, it's all right there. I don't know about you, but I don't know where these little red things, you know, that the dust thing blows out disappear to. They always, oh, it's right here. <laughs> yeah, I did, this is a new one, I hadn't set it up yet. <laughs> And by the way, all of these lovely bins that you see in this video, these used to be in my kids' room and they contained their, their little toys when they were younger that they no longer have or play with anymore. They've gone to good use now, but uh, every now and then, every now and then I think about that. If you saw my video from last week about, you know, the bike and the whole thing I did with my daughter with that, let me show you something, come this way. I have in my studio a TV that does nothing but play and, and show photographs that I've taken that inspire me. They're family photos, they're showing the passage of time, just like that video I did last week. So it's important in whatever space that you have that you find something that inspires you and you have it close by and you have it constantly nagging and reminding you constantly 24 hours a day that's what you need to do when I was younger I had a dark room basically in my bathroom and I had fixer and stop bath and all of the chemicals and things I mean <laughs> I didn't have any ventilation in there which is probably why I'm like I am today I would go to high school smelling like fixer my towels that I would use getting out of the shower were the same towels I used to clean the darkroom. You are immersed in your craft. Don't go that far if you're using Fixer and Developer, but you know what I'm saying. Have an inspiration. Have something that is with you and constantly there the entire time. So I've just shown you Studio B, okay? Now we're gonna go into the Studio A office. This is where I edit my videos, and it's also where I keep a lot of things in storage that I can get to very quickly. I'm not sure if a number of you remember this or not, but this used to be an area where there 
there was a table right here and I did product photography. And now that's been moved out into Studio B. So what I replaced this with is a complete battery charging station and an area where I can get to those little things that I constantly need in the studio. I decided that I didn't want my editing area to be in another room. I want to be right here so I can finish shooting in there and I can come out and this is not the most attractive place in the world. There are no clocks, there are no windows, there's no beauty and distraction of any kind. It's that's all it is. So I can completely focus on the task at hand. And part of being creative, I think, is eliminating all of these other distractions. But let me just show you one kind of cool thing. Check this out. These little flip up things, right? I can go like this and they flip just like that. And then these connect into my hard drives and I start editing. So I usually have three of them. When I go and I shoot in there, I have my main shot that you see. Hi, welcome to Palo. You have that shot. I have the camera camera overhead shooting down and I also have the camera menus that you see. One, two, three hard drives. So I bring those in here. One, two, three. The little dot lines up with the hard drive just like this and I'm good to go. And I also have two additional Thunderbolt cords that work with these external SSDs. Label everything. And this is a Synology DS220. I am making a video about this. By the way, Synology, if you're watching this, the video is being worked on, I promise. <laughs> because <laughs> I set this thing up for the video. This is a bunch of asset footage that I'm testing out to show you how you can use RAID drives offline and then be able to pull those assets into things like Lightroom or Capture One or Final Cut Pro video editing. That's what this is all about. And again, the desk didn't have a lot of room, so I had to clip on these little extenders. Here's a pair of headphones, boom, whoops. As I said, <laughs> this is amateur hour all the way, but these are great. These are like, you know, light clamps. You clamp them on and then boom, you, you put the stuff, but you gotta do it gently. You can't do that, you know, <laughs> right? Okay, so this right here is one of the poles that's used for an Insta360 action cam, because I didn't have a straight up pole, but I needed a microphone, a boom mic. Why would I need a boom mic, you ask? Well, it goes up here, goes over here, comes down here. Have a look at this. This comes out, okay? The boom mic goes into an audio recorder. This comes up and then this turns on. I instantly, lights, camera, action. Okay, that's the lights and then the camera comes up like this. And so what I do is I take a camera and I plop it right on here and it's aiming this way and it's shooting toward where I'm sitting at the desk. You see that right there? And I can get shots just like this one. Wireless HDMI video transmitter, the signal coming out of the camera over to here, have a look at this, come over here, right here into this monitor, this little monitor, which is just this goofy little thing I put, you know, right there. So when I'm sitting, so when I'm sitting like this, I can see if I'm in frame, I can see and it looks good. The microphone is picking up perfectly and I can record any kind of tutorial at a desk. Now, if I need more of a diffused light, I can grab this right here. The key is to have everything within an arm's, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> the key is to have everything within an arm's reach. Let's put this away before I knock and break any more stuff around here. <laughs> Hold on, we'll get to the mirror in a sec. So moving into this little alcove area, look at this, wardrobe. I literally have my own little wardrobe department. So I'll come here, I'll go like, hmm, I don't wanna be wearing this ugly, you know, red sweatshirt, I should put on something better. And I got the stuff right here. I even have a hat, you know, anything that I need is right here. And the other thing is I got these two backpacks. So if I need to get out quickly outside and grab a shot of something, boom, they come right off, everything is right here, right exactly where I need it. I try and keep everything organized. So this is the area I'm really proud of from an organization standpoint. I've talked about this before. I'm gonna give you my number one tip of all for everything that you see here. Everything has a home, but no visitors allowed. 
Let me show you what I mean. For example, I can only put Thunderbolt 3, 4 cables in this drawer, not USB-C. Inside here, TRS audio cables only, nothing else. Ronin SC gimbal parts, okay? In that one, X-T3 versus X-T4 brackets. If you're doing a YouTube channel, you absolutely have to work at maximum speed and efficiency. There is no room for wasting even five minutes looking for something. And I'm the sort of person I lose things all the time. So labeling things, having everything in its own place really matters. Come check this out. All the batteries I need right here. And a really good solution to this is to make sure that you keep your batteries where you charge them. And here's a Fujifilm battery, for example. You plug it right in like that and it charges. And then when it's done charging, it goes right back where it's supposed to be. Everything is right. I can just immediately, go, oh, a GoPro 5 battery. There it is. Right here, I've got micro SD cards, higher speed ones for video, regular SD cards, and photography SD cards. Everything is just in its own little area. Gimbals stay up here. And then here's another tip for you. Keep stuff that you use to stay organized accessible very easily. So I've got fasteners, right? If I need to tie things, cord ties, cleaning stuff, miscellaneous sensor, lens cloths, all in here. Very simple and easy to find. I even have a little label maker in case I need to quickly label something, right? <laughs> I don't know if you think I'm weird or not, but I'm just keeping it real, showing you what I do. Look at this. These are filter things. So if I need a variable ND 62 millimeter, hmm, where is it? Which one? Is, oh, it would be right here. I don't have to think. I don't want to think. I want to create. I want to be thinking about the story and not where the gear is housed. That's how I'm approaching this. Well, I think now we are ready to go into the main studio, Studio A. Before we do though, this right here is brand new. These are sound kind of barrier curtains I put in. They're not perfect but they do allow me to have better audio. And one of the things that I really wanted to do this time around, it was very important to me, was to better soundproof the studio. When I was initially starting the redesign and I took all of the furniture out, I then added all of these sound tiles. It was really important to me to build around that and to know that I could at least do something to get better audio here. Right before I go on air, I, I have to make sure, you know, my hair looks good and I'm, I'm just awesome. And I have this little mirror no, 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 that's that's the outside mirror. Check this out. This is the last minute, are you sure I'm looking okay mirror? By the way, these control the overhead lights in here. You see that? These are little cheap. I think they're 14 bucks or something. They're meant for like outdoor lawn lights, but they work so well that I've just, they've stuck. Little flashlight here. You never know when you need light, but come on in. And welcome to the pal to tech Studio A. This is where it all happens. I have completely redesigned this studio to make it just a little bit more fun to create in. Let's start right here. I kept this remaining from the old studio design. You know, extra mounts and things that I might need, I put right there. I always have a vlogging camera ready to go at all times. I mean, I'm talking SD card formatted, fresh battery, ready to go right there at a second's notice if I suddenly want to film something. And right over here is where I keep products and things that I'm about to review in the future or I'm close to reviewing. They're stored right here. And table space is so important. Important. I, that's another thing that the old studio didn't have. It never really had a place to put things down on. This is the most important part of the studio. Need I say more? This is the Gear Iguana Hall of Fame. I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. And by the way, behind here, I have all kinds of strip lights, little LED lights. I have lights here. I've got lights under here. I have a tube light right here. I have vintage bulbs up there. I have these little bar lights that are right here and right here and right here. I have even little lights on this Lego that's right here, okay? And I'm gonna turn it all on in just a second. You're gonna see it. I think I went a little overboard with the, the backlighting, okay? To be perfectly honest with you, if I were to do it again, I would maybe do, have done half of what I did. What studio would not be complete without a full-blown stormtrooper right on set? My talented wife, 
made this completely herself and she gave it to me and I love it and I've worn it on parades I've walked around and it. it's been awesome now it's in the studio it's perfect right here and there's one extra benefit I can check the white balance <laughs> yeah, right in the editor without needing one of these so I can I could just go dink with the eyedropper boom and I've got perfect white balance so it's an extra benefit of having a stormtrooper in a studio every studio should have one I wanted to de-emphasize the background more behind me than what I used to have in the videos where everything was all lit up the same and so I darkened the background but I didn't want to make it too dark which is why right here behind me I didn't want anything and when you see the videos there's nothing behind me except for this kind of blue glow and that comes from this spotlight right up here you see that that goes boom and shines right on the wall now I decided to add something just for me and this is really never seen in a single video it probably won't ever be in any normal pal detect video no one even knows it's here I know it's here though and that is 2001 it is playing on this background all the time it's in repeating loop you got to have one of your favorite movies of all time playing at all times in the background I mean <laughs> come on here's my main desk right here now I had a very interesting problem that I want to share with you this furniture is a lot higher than the old furniture was. So when I was sitting at my desk and I was recording my very first video, it looks like I've shrunk, like I'm smaller. I, I kind of just, I don't like that. So I had to raise the desk up because I couldn't lower the furniture. So what we did, we put these pieces of wood here and also right here, you see that? With a sandbag holding it down. It's a little bit wobbly because there's so much weight right here, right? It's kind of pulling it that way. It's not perfect, but you know something? It's a set. It doesn't have to be perfect. It has to look good. That's the difference. And so, yeah, that's what I do. It's a little, little raising it up a little bit, which helps in the overall kind of look of the background. I gotta keep it down, it's early morning. Gear Iguana's home is right here, okay? Now, when I put Gear Iguana in and I started to shoot some test footage, I realized you couldn't really see Gear Iguana and you couldn't see the cool license plates in the background. So I added my own spotlight. So you see that snoot right here, check it out. You see that? Okay, that right there shines directly on Gear Iguana. It's a very directional light. And then this background, kind of the same. I kept the lenses, right? And right down here is an actual computer station that's controlling this monitor and that monitor right there. And I'll kind of have a saying of the week, right? That shines from this, there's a light right here that shines on this. I'll have my photography saying. And then, you know, just kind of set decoration, set dressing is right here. Then this is just more, there's that YouTube, you know, congratulations plaque. Might have remembered a video I made on this, the sand of your life. There's some battery grips. <laughs> <laughs> the X-T3, I don't know why those are there. And then, you know, my two favorite fun in the moment cameras, there they are. To show you the lighting setup, I'm gonna need to put this camera down for a second. Let me do that. This is actually one of the things that took me the most time to do. But I gotta tell you, when I used to come in here and record my videos, I would spend so much time turning on the background lights and I'd always forget one of them. I would forget the hair light or I would forget the fill. And you know, it just, I don't wanna have to think about that. I've got enough on my mind. My mind has like a capacity. I can only handle so much. Maybe yours can handle more, mine can't. So I need extra help. Without any further ado, let's see if it works, okay? And this is what I do. I plop myself down in the chair, I face my camera, okay? And I say, Alexa, set studio background. There you go, look at that. I didn't, do, I didn't move, this was in real time. There was no edits. Go back and, and rewind and watch this video. There was no edits. I didn't jump cut anything. That's, how cool is that, okay? And let me tell you something, there are a lot of lights in the background. There's like probably 10 different light strip configurations going on. And I had to get an electrician out here to add more, what is it, amperage, wattage, more, more power, more power. I had to have that brought in here. So, you know, it was, that's what took so long. You know, that was one major thing, but I wanted the background to look good. I wanted to be happy with it. And I wanted the ability so that when I'm sitting here, hi everyone, welcome to black. when I'm sitting here that this right here this blue area is nice behind my my head it kind of just looks good is this perfect yet no I'm still tweaking it 
but I've gotten 98% of the way there. Well, first I'm gonna show you the lights and then I'm gonna show you the effect each one of them has. This is a kind of a teaching moment for you if you're thinking about lighting a scene, okay? Pay attention. All right, here we go. So for point of reference, the main camera is right there, okay? That is my key light coming right down, boom, at that 90 degree angle where you want it. That is my fill light, okay? So we're two lights right there, key and fill. I have a hair light that is right here. And there's kind of an extra light. I just have this one sort of overall giving a warmth to the scene, but it's not really any category that I could name. That's the blue spot I told you about that does that. So really the primary lights, key light, fill light, hair light, then there's one additional light, the kicker. Have a look at this right here, you see that? And as you can see, the hue of the kicker light is more of an orangish yellow, which is by design. So now I'm gonna go over the lighting and show you how I layer them. Okay, here we are with our main scene setup. This is the idea that I had in my head for about six months and I've been working on for the past month. It's now finished and so, you know, I can obviously zoom in and zoom out in editing, but this is the overall wide shot that I wanted. I could raise myself up and down. This is how it looked when I started and I was like, ooh, I gotta raise the desk. So now I can sit comfortably and be right about here. Let's talk lighting now. Okay, here I am lit only with the key light, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is add the fill light. There's the fill light. So your basic two light setup so far. Now to that, I'm gonna add the hair light, okay? You watching? There's the hair light, you see that? No hair light, hair light. No hair light, hair light. And remember that kicker that I told you about, that yellow orangish kicker, right? Here's what it looks like off, no kicker. And ready? There's the kicker. See that? I want you to look on this side of me and kind of on the background as I do it. It's on right now, now it's off. Now it's on, off, on, off, on, off. See, it's not a huge difference and a lot of people may not notice it, but it's all about sort of, you know, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the most important thing about lighting is it's not any one light. It's how you layer them together and mix them together, that, that end result that you want to achieve. That's where sort of the trial and error and learn from experience comes in. You know, I just realized something. There's one little thing missing. Ah, feeling much better now. <laughs> this is the overhead camera, same as I had before. This is an X-T2 running. And right over here, I have my main cam. My main camera is a Fujifilm X-T3, which I have plugged into continuous power all the time. This is the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter art lens. I have a 72 millimeter Black Pro Mist filter on it, which kind of smooths out my skin, makes it look a little nicer. I usually shoot an F2 with Face Eye Auto Detect. For my main audio, I use a Rode Shotgun NTG3 mic, and that plugs right into this Zoom F6 audio monitor. The main key light is an Aperture Amaran 200 with a Light Dome 2 softbox. The fill light is an Aperture Amaran 528 LED light with a diffuser put on the front. The spotlight is a small rig RC120D. The hair light is a Godox SL60W. Not a bad light, but you always hear the fan all the time when it's turned on. When I, when I do a... <laughs> you there? When I do a live stream, okay, <laughs> when I do a live stream, I put it, the problem with the live stream is that this camera is further back, right, from a focal length, and it's a pain in the butt to open up this, you know, this teleprompter cover and get in there and start monkeying around with it. So what I do is I take the, X, the other X-T3 that I have and I put that here, and this is the camera I run the live stream from. I got one more thing to show you, and that is in here, okay? Okay, and if you have a look at this right here, I used to have just a furniture moving blanket. So now I've got a little bit more class to this operation. But as you come in here, got my Godox flash stuff is right here that I need. Extra lights. When I blow breakers, I can get to it really quickly. I got that right here. Some additional products that I'm going to be reviewing are right here. I have additional lights, just kind of extra little odds and ends right there. This is my podcasting mic. And yes, I am going to be 
getting back for sure into Done Over Perfect podcast. If anybody wants to be on the podcast, let me know. I have tripods. Have a look at this. I store light stands down there. <laughs> That's the only place I can find them. Now, over here in all of this junk, this is props. This is what I call props. So if I need a Pokemon ball for one of my videos, boom, there it is, right? Or if I need to show off an old, you know, iPhone 3S, there it is. Um, you know, just little things like that. Well, that wraps up today's studio tour. And I really want to thank you for joining me. If you have any questions about the gear, let me know and I'll do my best to answer them. I will leave a link down below to a sort of a kit, a studio 2023 kit that, you know, can show you the type of gear that I have used. And remember, it's not always about the gear. Okay, just important to keep that in mind. It's about telling a story and the creativity. But anyhow, thank you so much for joining me and I hope you found the video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I will see you again in a brand new video very soon. Take care and we're out. Perfect. Did I do it okay? Yeah, I did great.